Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. In today's video I'm going to be talking about my goals for 2023, my reading goals, other goals, and also talk a little bit about some of my goals for 2022 and how I did. In previous years I've gone back and actually watched my goals video all the way through to see what exactly I said I was going to do. This year I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to talk about the things that I remember setting as goals for myself and how they've gone. One big goal that I had for myself was to do more author interviews and more panel discussions with authors. And while my original thinking was to do this on my channel, on this channel, and I didn't do that. What I did do is I had quite a few of those happen on Chapter 3 Podcast, which is a podcast I co-host with Liana from Liana's Library and Izzy from Happy For Now. And that has been amazing, getting to talk to some of my favorite authors, especially in the romance genre. We've had some really amazing author discussions and panels, and that has been incredible. So I'm really pleased to say that that is something I accomplished. I also set a couple of challenge TBRs for myself. I like to do this every year. For 2022, I had eight classics and eight sci-fi fantasy books that I wanted to challenge myself to read. As I'm filming this, it's still early in December and I am working to see if I can get to some of the remaining books. I have a couple in progress and I'm doing a whole video project tracking how I do. So I don't know that I will necessarily read all of them, but I have read a pretty substantial number of them. Here, so let's take a look back at what I put on this TBR and where I'm at right now. The first classic on this list was the one I'm actually currently reading. This is Black Reconstruction in America, 1860 to 1880 by W.E.B. Du Bois. This is a chunker. I am getting through it. I think I'm going to finish it by the end of the year. It's fantastic. I anticipate it being a five star read and it's really interesting. If you want to hear more about this, I'm going to be talking about it at length in a vlog project coming towards the end of the year, but success with that one. And this was a, a big one to get through. Also on my classics TBR was Parable of the Talents by Octavia Butler. I read this, I loved it, and it is one of my favorite books of the year. So it's been sitting on my favorites shelf through most of the year since I read it. It is the follow-up to Parable of the Sower and for me was even better. I love Octavia Butler. I think she was an incredible mind, an incredible writer, and if you haven't read her I highly recommend. And if you're wondering, I consider it a modern classic. I know it could have also gone on the sci-fi fantasy TBR. Number three was Lady Chatterley's Lover by D.H. Lawrence. I read this. I gave it three stars. It was an interesting experience. I'm glad I read it. I didn't love it, but it, again, glad that I read it. It was it was an interesting one. Number four is The Women of Brewster Place by Gloria Naylor. This is one that I currently have not read. However, I am hoping to read it before the end of the year, so that is still in progress. I suspect that I will probably finish all the classics on my TBR, though I'm not so sure I'll finish all the SFF books. Number five was We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. I had been meaning to read from Shirley Jackson. I finally did and it was fantastic. I gave this book five stars. It was right up my alley. I know not everybody likes her books. I think some people go in expecting more straight up horror and that's not as much what you get but this was just it, it was so good. Number six was a reread for me. This was Little Women by Louisa May Alcott and I loved it. It was a great reread. I didn't know how it was going to hit for me because I am in such a different place than I was when I originally read it, but surprisingly I loved it for different reasons. It was still a five star read. Next was Winter in the Blood by James Welch. This is a modern indigenous classic and I gave it three stars. This is another one where I didn't love it, but it was an interesting experience and I'm glad that I read it. I got a lot out of it, even if I had some issues with it. In some ways it's a product of its time, but it, it was a really fascinating book. Lastly was The Mysteries of Udolpho by Anne Radcliffe. This is an early classic of gothic romance and I gave it three and a half stars. Another one that wasn't perfect, but I am so glad I finally got around to reading it. It inspired a lot of writers that I love and was one of the early women writing in this genre, and so I, I feel like there's something valuable to reading it, and I had a pretty good time with it. Moving on, let's take a look at the books that were on my sci-fi fantasy TBR. The first one was The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin. 
I read this. It was a book club pick for my Patreon book club, which worked out nicely, and I gave it four stars. This is one where I could see revisiting it in the future and maybe rating it even higher. The, the execution of what she was trying to do is incredible, even if the actual project didn't always work for me. It's just, it. this is a really, really fascinating book to look at. Number two is The Female Man by Joanna Roos. I have not yet read this one. I want to. It is an early feminist sci-fi book that sounds fascinating. I'm again hoping to maybe get to it before the end of the year. We'll see. Number three is Dream Ships by Melissa Scott. This is a sci-fi book by a queer writer from the early 90s and it, it was so interesting. I gave it four stars. I really enjoyed reading it and even just as a, a, a time capsule of queer SF from the early 90s. Th there's a lot to discuss there. Numbers four and five are the last two books that I have not yet read and they are very long so I will probably read, if I was gonna guess, one of them but not both of them by the end of the year but maybe I'll surprise myself. Those are Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson. This is the, <laughs> this book is like a thousand pages long. It's so long. Why did I leave this till the end of the year? I don't know. Uh, and then Iron Gold by Pierce Brown. Also like 700 pages so We'll see. We'll see. Number six was Nine Fox Gambit by Yoon Ha Lee. I read it. I gave it five stars. I loved it. I read it actually as part of a vlog where I was reading books that I bought because of Angela at Literature Science Alliance. I can link that video up above. That was a really fun project to do. And I know that this doesn't work for everyone, but man, did it work for me. It was great. Number seven was Empire of Silence by Christopher Riocchio. I read this for the Chapter 3 podcast. Me and Leanna did an episode on it, which I can link if you want to check it out. She is a huge fan of the series, and I didn't love it as much as she did, but I really liked it. I gave it four stars, and I do intend to continue. And the final book that was on this TBR was Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb, and I love this. It's another one that made my favorite books of the year list. I gave it six stars, which in my personal rating scale is a favorite of the year. I love Robin Hobb. You can expect to see more Robin Hobb on my TBR moving into 2023. With that said, let's move on and talk about plans for 2023. I don't have a lot of comprehensive goals for the year. I have some specific challenge TBRs that I have set for myself. I have some plans, but I'm not going to set a ton of goals. Part of the reason for this is that in the new year I may be actively job hunting, and if I end up with a part-time or full-time job, you can expect to see content on this channel drop back a bit. And in light of that, my intention is to move away from what I've done for, you know, five and a half years of mostly doing two to three videos a week to doing one to two videos a week instead, which is pretty typical. A lot of channels do that. In the last couple of months, you might have noticed me doing less content, and some of that is intentional. Granted, December and January, I don't know what to tell you. It's going to be a lot of videos because end of year it's just so hard to condense it into less videos but once we get through that my intention is to do less than I had been doing previously and you know we'll see how that goes. So one of my goals is to work less <laughs> because I work a lot on the content that I make and you know as much as I love it and I love the community that I've created on Patreon and around this channel the financial piece of it is less than you would think. And I think what I've come to realize is that being controversial on the internet pays a lot better than what I usually do. <laughs> Which is fine, but given finances and where we're at in life, I need to start making some decisions in the coming year. So it is possible that things could change. Stay tuned. I always set a goal on Goodreads and it is always something that I can hit very easily. I don't like to set challenging goals on Goodreads because if I'm going to challenge myself I do it in other ways, not with the number of books that I read, which I care less about, but more with the specific kinds of books that I'm getting to. Speaking of which, I'm carrying over my benchmarks that I had in 2022 into 2023, where every month I'm going to aim to read about 50% from Black, Indigenous, or person of color authors. Reading from marginalized authors is something that matters a lot to me, and so this is something I do track. And I'm going to continue to try to read at least 25% from queer authors, openly queer authors. I do work to diversify my TBR in terms of other things as well, like disability, neurodiversity. Those are just not things that I'm trying to quantify in the same ways, but I'm going to continue to aim to do more of that. And I don't know if I said this, I, I was going to say it, but I'm going to set my Goodreads goal at 200 this year, which I think I probably can hit pretty easily. All right, with that said,
said, I think all that's left is to talk about read-alongs I am planning and some of my specific challenge TBRs. With Chapter 3 Podcast, me and Leanna are doing a year-long read-along of The Witcher series by Andrzej Sapkowski. I'm excited about this. I've so far only read the first book, so I'm looking forward to finally completing the series. I really enjoy the show, I enjoy the world, and it's one that I've wanted to get to, so we're gonna have episodes for every book. I'm not totally sure what me and Izzy are gonna be doing yet, so we've gotta discuss that and see, but we'll be doing something. Editing Bethany popping in here to let you know that me and Izzy have in fact decided what we're doing. So for the podcast in February, we're going to be reading Real by Kennedy Ryan. In March, we're going to be doing Persuasion by Jane Austen and also watching the Netflix adaptation, which I've been putting off, but I'm going to do it for content. And then beginning in April, we're going to be doing a read along of the entire Dark Olympus series by Katie Robert, ending with the second of the two books that's getting published in the series in 2023. So it should be fun. At some point, I plan to do a read along for the Tawny Man trilogy by Robin Hobb. I might do a read along with some friends for the Furyborn series by Claire Legrand. And I have other things I would like to do as well. So we'll see. It, like a lot of it's up in the air just depending on whether I have another job, what happens, We'll, we'll see. I also forgot to mention I am planning to bring back Tor.comathon. I mentioned this in a live stream lately, but I'll put it here too. In March, I'm going to be doing Tor.comathon probably for the whole month. Just give you the whole month if you want to do another bingo board style readathon to get two books from Tor and Tor.com, which is one of my favorite publishers. So stay tuned. More info coming on that later. Lastly, my challenge TBRs. In 2022, I had two TBRs and each of them had eight books. In 2023, I am going to have four challenge TBRs. Two of them have five books and two of them have six books. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. That said, I have a lot less long books on my TBR than I did for 2023. So I'm hoping that's going to make this more manageable. Let's begin with my classics TBR. There are five books on this list I'm hoping to read. First is Lead in the Mist by Hope Mir Lees. Did I put this on my classics TBR because I was already going to be reading it for Blades and Bodice Rippers book club? Possibly set myself up for success. This was Liana's pick. We're reading it in January, so I will definitely be reading this one. It is a rarity in that it is pre-Tolkien fantasy written by a woman with fae things. I haven't read it yet. It sounds intriguing. I am looking forward to it. This came out in 1926, so it is definitely a classic. The second book on my classics TBR is The Magic Toy Shop by Angela Carter. Isn't this beautiful? It's such a pretty edition. Uh, I don't really know what this is about. I saw this on Mara's channel a while ago and was like, that's pretty. I want that. I've read One Thing by Angela Carter. I really enjoyed it. One night, Melanie wanders in the garden wearing her mother's wedding dress. The next day, she learns her parents are dead. She is sent to live with relatives, gentle Anne Margaret and her brothers, Francie and Finn. Brooding over all is Uncle Philip, a toy maker who loves only the toys he creates. Creepy. Should be interesting. Book number three is an installment in the Penguin v. Tay line. This is Not Without Laughter by Langston Hughes. Langston Hughes is known as a poet of the Harlem Renaissance, but he also wrote a novel, and this is the novel he wrote, and I want to read it. So this is the story of Sandy Rogers, a young African-American boy in small town Kansas, and his family, his mother, Angie, a housekeeper for a wealthy white family, his irresponsible father, Jim Boy, who plays the guitar and travels the country in search of employment, his strong-willed grandmother, Hagar, who clean, clings to her faith, his Aunt Tempe, who marries a rich man, and his Aunt Harriet, who struggles to make it as a blues singer. Hughes gives the longings and lineaments of Black life in the early 20th century an important place in the history of racially divided America. Sounds interesting. Then I have one of these really cute little mini penguin small classics, like mini cloth bound classics. This is translated from Japanese. It is called Hellscreen by Ryunosuke Akutagawa, and it is a collection of Japanese horror short stories, I believe. They were first published in Japanese between 1915 and 1927, so I'm very intrigued. And the final classic on this TBR is The Lottery by Shirley Jackson. It's another one of these cute little small classics, and it is another 
quite short book. It is a short story that I have heard has a twist ending and it seems to really hit people hard. So I'm excited to read some more Shirley Jackson this year. Next, I have five books on my general sci-fi fantasy TBR and we're being a little loose in definitions. One of these is like sort of sci-fi and that is Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. I have been meaning to read this for a couple of years now and have not yet gotten to it. It's not terribly long. I am putting it on this TBR because I want to read it. And I've enjoyed other things I've read from Kazuo Shiguro. Next is more Octavia Butler because I want to eventually read through all of her books. This is Dawn, the first Lilith's Brood novel. I don't know much about it, but it's a beautiful book and I really love her writing. Then we have Fool's Errand by Robin Hobb. This is to make myself do that read along of the Tawny Man trilogy this year, officially putting it on my sci-fi fantasy TBR. I have also had requests to do an author video on N.K. Jemisin and in order to do that I need to actually finish reading the rest of her backlist. So in light of that I'm putting The Shadowed Sun on my TBR. This is one of the few books that I have not yet read from her and I love her as well. She is one of my favorite authors and I need to finish this duology. Lastly is another book in a series I want to continue with. It is Moonwitch Spider King by Marlon James. Black Leopard Red Wolf was controversial. I really liked it even though it's controversial and I want to continue but I feel like I need a push to read this book so we're putting it on the challenge TBR two to go and each of these has six books. First I have a nonfiction TBR that I put together and I didn't intend to do this at first but I, we're gonna just gonna make it a thing since that's how it ended up. All of this is nonfiction by black authors and they're all things that I've been wanting to read and I want to push myself to do it and what better way than to put them all on a TBR. Here are those books. Women, Race, and Class by Angela Davis. I have not read anything from Angela Davis and I really feel like I should and uh, this seems like a great place to start. Feminist writing from somebody who is an icon. Then for another icon that I really should have read by now and have not, we're gonna read The Fire Next Time by James Baldwin. This is not too long. Again, I'm trying to put shorter books on this so that I will actually get to most of them, um, but I really wanna read James Baldwin, another person who is a iconic thinker, a queer, black man who has had a lot of interesting things to say and I want to start reading his work. We're going to begin with this. Next is an academic book that I picked up like a year and a half ago that sounded really interesting and I'm going to read it now. This is Black on Both Sides, A Racial History of Trans Identity by C. Riley Storton. This is from the University of Minnesota Press and it sounds really interesting. The idea of looking at history of trans identity um, among black people I am interested. Then we have one I've been meaning to read for years, so we're gonna do it. The Dark Fantastic, Race and the Imagination from Harry Potter to the Hunger Games by Ebony Elizabeth Thomas. I have heard fantastic things about this. It's another one that is not terribly long, but seems to really hit a chord with people. Another icon I have shamefully not yet read from, Bell Hooks. We're gonna read Killing Rage, Ending Racism by Bell Hooks. There are many books by her that I would like to read, but this is one I own, so we're gonna start with this. And then the final book on my nonfiction TBR is another one that is kind of a classic. I have the 10th anniversary edition, and I think this has inspired a lot of more recent writers. The New Jim Crow, Mass Incarceration in the Age of Colorblindness by Michelle Alexander. So this one was actually gifted to me from one of my patrons and friends and I really appreciate it and I'm planning to read it in 2023. Thank you Isabella for this. Lastly, some of you have probably been waiting for this, I know. I am planning in 2023 to dip my toes into the Star Wars book universe. You may not know this about me but I really love Star Wars. I love the films. I have a complicated relationship with some of the TV shows, but I like some of them. And I have never read, well, not never, that's not true. I've read one Star Wars book. I've not read a lot of Star Wars books and I would like to try getting into them. They've always been a little intimidating to me because there are so many of them and figuring out where to start is a little tricky, but I have had some fantastic advice from people. I have found some books that I am really interested in. Some of them are from authors I like, some of them are about characters I like, or just sound like they would be up my alley. And so I have a list of six Star Wars books that I want to read 
in 2023. I may make this a reading vlog at some point. It's like tentatively the plan, at least with some of them. I currently have five of these books and one of them I have not yet ordered, but I will. The first book is actually an anthology of short stories. This is From a Certain Point of View and it's got a lot of amazing authors who I really love. I actually did start this at one point and I just never got very far. I have this really fancy special edition that is signed by a bunch of the authors and it is beautiful. Um, but I, I plan to read this. I probably won't read this copy specifically. I'll probably get like the audiobook or an ebook or something, but it seems like a good place to start to kind of dip my toes in and see who some of the authors writing for this universe are and what they're like. Then I am planning on reading Bloodline by Claudia Gray. I have heard nothing but praise for this book and I am really excited about it. I am also a Leia fan so this seems like it should be pretty interesting. So this follows Leia before The Force Awakens but in between trilogies which sounds great. So I'm gonna read that. Then for some more Leia but make it a romance I'm picking up the Princess and the Scoundrel by Beth Revis. I have heard some really good things about this from people who I know who read it and liked it. It's it's Han Solo and Leia. I am so excited. Yes, give me a Star Wars romance, please. And thank you. But is that enough Han Solo for us? No, of course not. We need more. So I'm also going to be reading Last Shot, a Han and Lando novel by Daniel Jose Older. I really like Daniel Jose Older. I had purchased this a while ago because I liked him and always was like, I maybe want to try some Star Wars books at some point. And so we're going to do it. This sounds like fun. Even the fastest ship in the galaxy can't outrun the past. I feel like this is going to be great. I'm excited for the Han and Lando vibe. We'll see how this goes. The last one I currently have a copy of is Brotherhood by Mike Chen. This of course is a younger Anakin and Obi-Wan Kenobi, another one I've heard fantastic things about and I'm excited to dive into it. The final Star Wars book that I am planning on reading is the one I haven't bought yet but I will be buying it pretty soon. This is Thrawn by Timothy Zane. Is it Zane or Zahn? I'm not sure but I have heard really good things about Thrawn and I am here for a villain story or a more villainous story. So we're going to try this one out as well. Those are the six Star Wars books I am planning to read in 2023. And with that, we're going to end this video. This was a lot longer than I thought it was going to be, given the fact that it's mostly just like talking about specific books I'm planning to read and not much else. But talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts. Are there any of these that you're especially excited to see me get to? Do you have any goals for 2023 in terms of your reading or just whatever? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, it always helps if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.